It's called guy problems. Hmm. It's the old one. All right, guys, so next step in your turbo journey, whether it's, you know, you just did a custom setup like I did or you got a car that was already boosted. Um, after a while, or this may even be in your plans, you realize you want to turn up the boost. Um, so there's a couple ways you can do that. You can either upgrade your wastegate spring. Uh, in my wastegate particular, I have a 10-pound spring in there, which means that's the minimum amount of boost that I can run. Or you can go with the boost controller. So now with boost controllers, you have two options. You have, of course, the manual boost controller and the electronic boost controller. The manual boost controllers have been around for a long time and are really pretty simple. In the background of some of my videos, you may have heard Trey kind of refer to those as uh, the turn and pray style. And what he means by that is there's really no way to know how much boost you're increasing with those valves or with those boost controllers. Uh, you basically have to turn the dial, take it for a drive, hit max boost, turn the dial again, Take it for another drive and see how much it increases. Uh, whereas with an electronic boost controller, you can be a lot more precise, a lot more accurate. And um, if your ECU allows it, which of course the Evo One does, you can actually do what's called boost by gear or you know gear dependent boost. There's a bunch of names for it. <clears throat> if you're in a situation again, like a lot of us are, a lot of Honda guys are, where you're gonna be limited by traction, being that it's wrong wheel drive, you know you can say that in first gear, the parameters for first gear that you only run 10 pounds, because again you can't go below 10 pounds. But in second gear, I want to be able to run 12 pounds. Third gear, I want to be able to run 15 or 20, and so on and so forth. You can actually program that, and the ECU will control that. An example of an electronic boost controller. Um, this one came from Tier 1 Motorsports from Amazon. Of course, check the link in the description. And this right here is a Mac valve. This is a three-port a three boost controller. Um, this particular kit came with the lines and the fittings that you need. And if you look this up on Amazon, this kit costs about 60 bucks. You can get just the valve itself for like 30 and you may be a little hesitant because many, <clears throat> because even manual boost controllers, which are like the dumbed down version of this, cost more than that. But this is the exact same thing, the exact same thing that AM, Grimspeed, and I'm sure some other companies use. Now, AM doesn't even bother to paint it. They just slap a different sticker on the front of it. So if you look at it, this is what it looks like. Now, they, I'll put up a picture of the AM one and of the Grimspeed one. They literally just take this device rebrand it and sell it to you for, for you know two you know almost three times the price you know now granted it also does come with like a bracket and uh for the evos a plug where you can just attach it you know you can just replace your factory one but this is all that is it's typically a 30 dollar part that they charge you over 100 dollars for and it is again the exact same thing it's not a knockoff they buy these they rebrand them that's all that is so this is the option i chose to go with obviously a manual boost control it's a little bit easier to install um, there is a little bit of wiring to be done with this, but I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to document it and show you guys how to do it because I feel like, especially in present day, this is a much better option to allow you to run more boost and still keep your traction, which is a really a win-win at the cost of a little bit of wiring. Especially considering with as small as that valve is, you can really hide it anywhere because uh, you don't really need to uh, physically adjust it after you set it. Um, so personally, I'm going to end up tucking it, I think, Back here, this turbo and a bunch of your eBay turbos don't have a boost reference point. Now what that is, is basically gonna be a fitting that comes off the compressor housing of your turbo. Typically it's a little brass fitting, some of them are straight, some of them come in 90s. Uh, There's a bunch of different versions, but this particular one doesn't have it. So what I'm gonna have to do with this is actually take the compressor housing off, which again, isn't hard, uh, it's really just six bolts, and undo that bottom uh, T-bolt clamp to connect the intercooler piping. I'm going to pull this thing off, bring it over to my drill press, and go ahead and get that installed. So, so what I got for mine, I actually got uh, this guy right here. We're just going to tap the turbo compressing, put some uh, sealant or thread sealer on this so it doesn't leak. And this is going to be our boost reference point, and it's going to allow us um, to use either boost controller. Um, either way you need this, whether you're running manual or electronic. All right, guys, so I got my area somewhat cleaned up. You see, I got my compressor housing. So you may be wondering where you can drill for your boost reference. Now, a lot of turbos, you'll see them sort of in this area here. And there may be a little raised area um, where you can drill at. On this turbo, it actually happens to be on the bottom. So I may use this. I want to look at it one more time to see if that's going to interfere. Or I may end up going uh, somewhere up here, which isn't going to be as aesthetically pleasing. But 
I know it'll work and I know it will, you know, clear everything because there's nothing really up here. Uh, I talked about it. This uh, coupler here, it seems to be, it's a, actually a pretty high quality coupler. I do like the coupler, but it's an extremely tight fit to get it over top of this, uh, this little ledge here. So this turbo has a pretty big lip right on the edge of it. Um, you can kind of see it from the backside. It's actually really hard to squeeze this over. I think this is a, a two inch inlet. This thing is two inch to three inch. Um, it was a really tight fit. And that's the reason this is still on here, just because I don't feel like fighting with it to get this back on because this is a pain in the butt to get it on here in the first place. I mean, I may loosen it up and see if I can squeeze it just a little bit more so it sits more on the top of here. But that's why this is still on here. And I'm gonna drill it with this still on here just because I'm not dealing with this again. But uh, anyway, so now I'm gonna look at this, see where I wanna put my boost reference just one last time. Go ahead, get my drill bit into my press and get started. So I got my bigger bit. All right, guys, so that's it. Got me a clean hole. Of course, this is aluminum, so it does drill pretty easily. Now, of course, I just want to try, but I think that will work. I can almost, it's almost tight enough where I can thread it in there like that. So I'm going to get my tap and try to tap this. And then see if I can thread this piece in. So I got my tap and die set. And these tap and die sets, most of these come with handles, um, but you can use these in a drill because if it goes in at an angle or crooked, you're going to cross thread it and you're not going to get a good seal. So it's really up to you on whether or not you want to risk it. So of course, it'll say on the bit what size tap you need. So this says one eighth MPT. So you want to make sure that matches up with the, you know, the fitting that you bought. Now, I'm not going to do this all the way, of course. I'm going to put the camera down and actually hold this with my hand so I can make sure I get a good angle, but... You get the idea. All right, so a couple seconds later. That's some nice threads cut. Now I'm going to go ahead and test my fitting, make sure they work. I'm going to clean this up using some air and some water. Because you definitely don't want to have little aluminum flakes inside of here. And get this back on the car. And then we'll be ready for some boost control. I'm actually thinking I was going to install it in this corner over here. But I may even go a different route. Maybe put it over here on the side. All right, guys, so I should change it up a little bit. Instead of mounting it over here, I'm actually mounting it over here. Uh, reason being just because of where the connections are. Just because of the wastegate and the pressure source that's coming off of the uh, turbo here are all on this side. And of course, plumbing it way over here, which is gonna cause me to have to use a lot more hose um, you know, and I just really want to do that. All right, guys, so I actually got this plumbed up. This part is actually pretty simple. So you have your number one port. I have a T here. One is going to the turbo. The other is going to the bottom port on the wastegate. This on number three is actually a filter. And on number one, this is going to the top of the wastegate. Now, fortunately, the good thing about this kit is that the fittings... Get some light. The fittings that it comes with actually thread into the wastegate and the turbo. So I took that brass barb out and I should use these little, I don't think these are called push lock fittings, but whatever these are called. You can just use these instead of like the ones that come with it or even the brass and it makes installing this a lot easier. And of course, you know, you can't just pull these out. You actually have to push in on this part to pull this hose out. And it's still pretty easy to get out. So I ran my hose just under here. I want to try to keep it as far away from the exhaust as possible. Of course, of course my downpipe and my dump tube are wrapped, um, but I did want to still keep it away from it and keep it away from any sharp edges. Right here, it kind of ducks below that frame rail. This one is not even close, but I may figure out something else to secure this. And then this one, on number one, it runs, it's through a hole that was already there in the, in the body. Kind of runs along here and then to the wastegate and it kind of dips down under there and i did that just so i could avoid the dump tube like i said you can see the other line from the turbo again i use that same fitting that came with the kit and it's a 90 and then cord runs here and i'm going to zip tie this to the bottom of the radiator somewhere so this will be out of the way right, but that is it as far as the actual plumbing now i just have to 
go ahead and wire, hook these two wires up. All right guys, so I got the solenoid, I had the solenoid hooked up, and it's actually pretty simple. So you're just gonna take one of these wires to your ECU. Um, for me, since I'm using the Evo ECU, I went with pin 13, which is on the stock Evo, your boost control solenoid. And of course, this being a 3G harness, it doesn't have that. But what I did, I clipped the pin from the auto ECU and just added it here. Now, I know that sounds kind of like a big deal, uh, but it really isn't and wasn't. But I just took this and just slid it in here, clipped it back on. So now that's in pin 13, which again on this factory Evo is already the boost control solenoid. So this was just temporary. Obviously, I was just testing it. Just connect it and that's going to attach to one wire on the solenoid and then the other wire is going to go to a switch 12 volt all right guys so i'm pretty much done installing this electronic boost control this mag valve um, but i have all these wire colors for some reason i went with this but and i ran it through the fender kind of through the factory spot where the factory harness comes and of course there's slack here so i can actually tuck this away when i'm done and this actually goes to this pink wire actually goes to one of the uh, wires on the mag valve and then this red one is just going to be a constant uh, 12 volt and I'm just going to run this to the fuse box so that it cuts on when the car cuts on. Much like, you know, the gauges and whatnot. But that's really all to it. You have to add that to pin 13. I'm going to Evo scans. On the bottom right hand corner, there's a button that says actuators. I guess I can show you guys this too. I might put it up on the screen. This actuators, you click on that and you click on wastegate solenoid um, to activate it. And you should be able to hear it click if it's working. And then you just have to get with your tuner to, you know, tune boost by gear. So, you know, now of course the Mac valve, electronic boost controller, whatever you want to call it, it's not magic. It's, you can still only run whatever base spring is in your wastegate. So like I said, in this one, I have a 10 pound spring. So that's gonna be my lowest. Um, I'm thinking just right off the bat, it'll be 10 pounds in first gear, second gear will be 15, third gear up will be 20. So that's what I'm gonna get with my tuner about. Of course, I still have a little bit of work to do on this. I'm just cleaning some stuff up, mainly on the inside to get some of my wires right because I've been kind of putting it off because I really don't like doing wiring. Uh, so like this left side headlight doesn't work and I know why. Um, and just the other few things, but mechanically the car runs. I actually got to bleed the clutch last night. The spec 2 feels pretty good. It's definitely a lot, uh, definitely noticeably stiffer than the stock one. Like, so I'm not gonna be able to put the driving clip in this video, but just be on the lookout. It should be coming soon. I want to thank you guys for watching my video. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button, that subscribe button if you haven't already. And have a great day.